guys. So many of you know that once in a while I like to hop on video and actually answer frequently asked questions that I get um, in social media, via email. And today I am talking all about creative confidence. And the thing I tend to get asked about a lot are questions like, what do you do if your work doesn't sell? If you hit a dead end, how do you put your work out there? Um, how do you find your own style? How do you have the courage to quit your day job? So those are, tend to be a lot of real frequently asked questions that I get. And for me, those questions really fit into the topic of building creative confidence. And some of you out there might be going like, huh, what's that? Um, but for me, it is probably one of the most important elements in the growth that I've had as both an artist and as a business owner. So today, I am going to be sharing with you guys a few tips about just building your confidence as an artist and a creative and what that actually looks like in real life. It sounds really like, woo, kind of um, magical and like building your creative confidence, what's that? But it really, you can be super practical about it and really follow kind of a little formula to start creating like this confidence in yourself to go after creative projects, to learn new things, to sell your art. Um, those things all require an immense amount of courage and an immense amount of confidence. And most of us don't start off our creativity and our art with that courage and confidence. You really have to build it. So I'm gonna share with you guys a few practical ways that you can start building that creative confidence with the hope that it can kind of spark some action in your art world, in your art life, and in your creative journey. Okay, tip number one, um, practice. And you guys are probably gonna hear me say this and be like, ah, uh, duh, Alyssa, I know I need to practice, but no, I really mean it. There is nothing that will bring you more confidence in yourself as an artist, as a creative, as somebody who's going to eventually sell their work than really doing what you love to do really well. And usually this means the one thing that those of us who are creatives and really arty thinkers um, don't like to hear, which is practice and discipline. But I am here to tell you as a total flake, I'm a totally flaky person, I am a textbook artist, I think like an artist, I want to create when I'm feeling it, I don't wanna force myself to create, but over time I've really learned that the practice element and the discipline element when it comes to making art is really what's going to eventually lead to a lot of confidence in the stuff that you're making. So you can't just like out of the gate be really good at something. Um, you have to practice. You have to maybe take classes or hone your skills or explore something, whether it's a supply or a technique. The more time you take to practice and really get familiar and know that thing like the back of your hand, know that thing like nobody else knows it, you are going to begin to feel incredibly confident in what you are making. Okay, tip number two is to actually set small goals. I am a huge believer that tiny, manageable, goals really equal up to big, big things. And conquering small goals, conquering small tasks, totally is going to put you on the path to feeling confident and like you can take on the world with your art and your creativity and those big dreams. So for me, it has always looked like finding just small tangible goals that I can fit into my schedule, I can fit into my work day, I can fit into being a mom, and really making sure I meet those goals. Um, there is nothing in this world, especially when it comes to setting goals, that is going to bring you confidence than actually meeting those goals. Um, but I think when you set a goal, big goals are great. They're wonderful, they're amazing, and they feel super good to accomplish. 
but it's usually not that tangible when you're a busy working mom or when you're juggling a day job and your art and creativity or you don't have the money to maybe go towards some real big goals. Um, there's a lot of obstacles that can stand in your way when it comes to setting these gigantic goals. I think you should still set them, but I think when you set small tangible goals for your day, for your week, for your month, when it comes to creativity, you have like the odds are in your favor to meeting those goals pretty quickly. And my theory is, actually it's not a theory because I feel like for myself I've proven it, but it's that when you meet a goal, you just get a little bit more confident. You get a little bit more fire in your belly. And the more of that that you have with your art, um, the more confidence you're gonna have moving forward, the more brave you're gonna feel about opening up a shop, the more brave you're gonna feel about sharing new work on Instagram, the more brave you're gonna feel about maybe reaching out to other artists to collaborate or to work together or go to coffee. You're gonna have confidence because you've got all this fire and this momentum built up from setting and meeting small goals. So for me, those small goals look super small. Um, they look like uh, anything from practicing with a new material for two weeks straight. Like I will give myself the goal of, you know, in two weeks, I wanna make sure I am so comfortable with this new set of watercolors that I can grab it and know what colors to mix and how I'm gonna paint something with these materials. Um, that's a real tangible goal that I set a lot of times, especially when I'm using new things, new materials, trying out new stuff. Um, taking pictures of your art and making sure they're edited, that's a great small goal. Applying to a local craft show, that's a bigger goal, but still small, it's tangible. It's You can absolutely meet that goal. Um, making a goal to share three times a week new art on your Instagram account. Um, reaching out to a fellow artist and just to, I don't know, connect, be friends, maybe collaborate, maybe go to coffee, that type of thing. Those for me all fall under the umbrella of setting small goals because they're really, really tangible. At least those are goals that have been tangible for me in my life when I was juggling a day job, um, including now when I'm juggling running a business, being a mom, I still wanna set small goals. I still wanna meet those goals and create that confidence. So setting those small, tiny, tangible goals with your art um, is really going to begin to build up. It creates that momentum in your life, creates that confidence to keep trying maybe a bigger goal, maybe trying something different, and really, really having the courage to keep moving forward. So many times when it comes to creativity, it's very, very easy to just give up because you feel like your work doesn't look good or you set your bar so high that you're like, oh, I can't do that now because I have no time. Get rid of all that and just go for the small stuff that you know by the end of the week you will accomplish. You know by the end of the month you'll have like five small goals that you met when it comes to your art. Next thing you know, you're ready to take on five more and maybe one big goal. So setting small tangible goals is some of the best advice that I can give when it comes to building that creative confidence. Okay, so number three is actually to embrace the negative stuff. And this is gonna sound probably pretty like a typical thing to say, but I'm telling you, it's it's absolutely true. I think as artists, as creatives, it's really easy to put your heart and soul into the things that you make and create and share, which means when they fail, when they look bad, when they fall short, when you hit a dead end, it hurts you in your soul because we put our heart and soul into our creativity. Um, creativity is like nothing else out there when it comes to a task or a daily practice because so many of us creatives, um, we feel it deep, deep in our heart. So if we get bad feedback, if something doesn't sell, if we feel like we failed, if we feel like something we spent hours on looks gross and ugly, um, it's, it's kind of like shattering. And I think what I've learned is that you have to just embrace all that crap. You've got to just take it in, be willing to learn from it, but not let it block your creativity, not let it block your path. Because there's nothing worse when it comes to making art than a block. 
Um, there's writer's block, there's also artist block, where you get so bogged down with criticism and what something looks like and it doesn't feel good enough or beautiful enough or you're not confident enough to hang it on the wall. And all of a sudden, that adds up over time. Like it gets you kind of scared to keep creating. And the more scared you get, the more blocked up you get. And the next thing you know, two or three months have passed and you haven't made any art simply because somebody gave you bad feedback or you do feel really, really insecure about what you've been working on. Those things have to be pushed through. And the best way to push through them is to just keep creating no matter what. No matter if that surface looks like crap, finish it. No matter if you didn't sell anything, find somewhere else to sell it. Make more art, try again. You have to push past those moments of failure and all the negativity so that you don't get blocked up as an artist. And the result in pushing past that stuff and not just hiding in your house or your studio and not making art for a while. You don't wanna do that. That is gonna block you up and it's gonna be harder to start again. You wanna push through all that stuff so that on the other side of it, you're going to eventually find that confidence. Confidence does not come from hiding out when you get negative reviews or a bad critique or no sales. Confidence doesn't come from hiding out and just stopping the process. Confidence comes from pushing through that stuff, making art despite the fact that you're not selling anything, making art despite the fact that somebody said something negative about it. You keep pushing through that. I promise you, I'm making lots of promises in this video, I promise you that the process of pushing through the negativity, whatever that looks like, pushing through those obstacles that come with making art, pushing through like the soul crushing feelings you get <laughs> when you feel like you failed creatively is going to eventually lead to confidence. Confidence does not come by stopping and changing your style and listening to people critique you or hate on your art. Confidence does not come feeling negative or defeated by no sales. Nothing comes from that. Just an artist block is gonna come from that. Where your confidence will come from is pushing through all that yucky crap. And on the other side of it, if you keep making art through that stuff, if you keep experimenting, if you keep trying, eventually you're going to like leave the negativity behind and you're gonna find your groove again. I'm not gonna promise you it happens overnight. I've had so many soul crushing experiences with my art from terrible critiques in college to bad grades to not selling stuff to terrible, mean, hateful comments on social media about art and my art to all kinds of failures and dead ends and thinking something's gonna sell or somebody's going to sign a contract with me and it doesn't happen. Um, all of those things, if I even let one of those things keep me from making art, I wouldn't be where I am today. So pushing through that, putting your head down and going despite the crap, despite the negativity, despite the failure or feeling insecure about what I'm making, I'm going to push through it because pushing through on the other side, there's confidence waiting for me because look, I still made art anyway. I did it with all that negativity and I pushed through. And that my friends is when you have a breakthrough with your creativity, with the process. A lot of times it takes failure to spark new ideas to spark um, new inspiration or to spark new avenues when it comes to your art and your creativity. Okay, so my last and final tip is actually the one thing that I struggle with the most when it comes to creating that confidence and that is to celebrate your success no matter if it's big or small. I think it's so easy in anything that we do to conquer, overcome, or do something that we're really proud of and just to move on to the next thing. Um, but I have found that stopping and really honoring like the process or the time or the work or the creativity that it took to create a series of paintings or to put your, um, your work in an online shop to try to sell or to apply to a craft show or to approach a gallery, 
All of those things are so incredibly important. They take courage, they take confidence, and we have to stop to celebrate those things, to celebrate the time, the effort, and the creativity that goes into them. And what I found is that when I actually stop to feel gratitude, to appreciate what happened with success, those are the moments where I really kind of have this, this swell in confidence where I feel a little bit like, okay, I got this. I'm going to, I'm going to try something bigger next time. Um, and if you don't stop to recognize the time it took to learn a new skill, if you don't stop to recognize, you know, the way you feel about a painting that you love, you're never going to really, really feel at your core that confidence and pride and courage. Um, you're just gonna kind of keep chasing some dream of the unattainable, of perfection. But even the things that aren't perfect, even the things that maybe fail, stopping to really recognize that there's success in just trying, that there is success and good things that can come out of practicing something, putting paint to paper, um, sharing your work, um, sharing the ideas that you have. There's something so important in the creative process in stopping to appreciate those things. And I've just found that when I do make time and space to do that, and I don't mean like throw yourself a party and start bragging about who you are as an artist, I mean just stopping and really, really feeling gratitude and appreciation and excitement about the creative successes that you have. Maybe it's finally conquering a certain supply. Um, maybe it's completing your first series of paintings. Maybe it's that you sent an email, you had the courage to send an email to a book publisher. Whatever it is, it's taking the time to really feel the gratitude, to really live in that moment of like, wow, I finished this series of paintings and look what I've created. This is amazing. What a great accomplishment. Just taking time to do that is going to slowly build that confidence. And again, the more confidence you have, the more ability you're gonna have to move forward and paint another series and try something else and put yourself out there more. And the more that adds up, the more momentum you're gonna have in your creative journey. So with that said, I wanna encourage you guys to really embrace creative confidence. Whether it comes to failure or trying something new or putting your work out there, the best thing that you can do is start really getting confident with yourself as an artist, with the supplies that you use and the process and your style, all that good stuff. Really try to think about the things that are going to bring confidence into your life, into your journey as a creative. And the more that you embrace that confidence, I guarantee you, the more your work is going to flourish, the more courage you're gonna to have to take risks with supplies, with new techniques and mediums and new opportunities. And the more risks you take, the more courage you have, the more confidence you build, it's just gonna make you a better artist. It's gonna make you more profound. You're gonna really want to embrace the journey instead of being afraid or feeling stuck. So I wanna encourage you guys all out there to find one thing today that you can do creatively to bring a little bit of confidence into your process. And as you kind of conquer that one thing, start adding to it and see what happens in your creative life.